Hello everyone, for today's video I have a full suicidal fiend moveset. This was suggested by FootSoldier51, so if you have any moveset suggestions of your own, leave them in the comments and the most interesting ones will be used for future videos. And of course if you do enjoy these videos, please leave a like. So getting into what he suggested, we have Hellstein Shock, Tribeam, do or die and rise to action as my four supers, Neo Tribeam and final explosion as my two ultimates and Kaioken as my transformation and he says I can use any evasive that I want. So getting into the moveset, firstly I could not use Hellstone Shock so instead I replaced it with Fake Death. Just in case you don't know what Hellstone Shock does, if you use it you hit yourself and you take damage and that's it. <laughs> Captain Ginyu did use it in the anime before he switched bodies with Goku, which makes sense, but in the game it's it's quite useless to be honest. I think I've used it just twice, firstly was for a video on the old channel, firstly was when I was in a team battle and I kept using it to deliberately get knocked out so I could revive myself and to get a massive Zenkai boost, but to be honest I did it more so for a gimmick than anything else. And secondly, I think this was the only other time I used it, it was also for a video where the guy went AFK and he kept using capsules in the previous fight, so I used Captain Ginyu, dashed up to him, kept using Hellstone shock then I switched bodies with him and one hit KO'd him and that's the only other time I've used it and I don't think I'm ever going to use it again because it's the worst attack in the game. So like I said I replaced Hellstone Shock with Fake Death because it fits with the theme of the moveset plus you can kind of combo into Fake Death so it is kind of useful in that regard. We've also got a secondary theme here of Kaioken which is pretty nice so of course for my transformation Kaioken. I'm guessing Foot Soldier 51 said to use Kaioken because it's a life risk in form which I love and we've got Rise to Action which I'm guessing is because of Kaioken so I can can kind of maintain it now for a long time if I need it. So this is off topic to what the video is, if I were to run a Kaioken move set competitively, I would probably go for Rise to Action, Maximum Charge, Twin Darkness Star and maybe Hyper Drain, so that way I can use Darkness Twin Stars as a bit of a shield, then use Maximum Charge and then just keep using Rise to Action so I recover my stamina and Hyper Drain so I can use it in the middle of a combo to recover both my key and stamina. Plus it drains theirs, so it's kind of a win-win for me. I mean, I may do this for a future video, who knows? So getting back to this moveset, Troy Beam as my super and Neo Troy Beam as my ultimate because I'm guessing he picked these because when they're used in the anime, Tien basically kills himself. I love the Troy Beam attacks in general, I just think they're very badass looking. I just think it's a bit of a shame that you rarely see them used online because they're, quite frankly, in Xenoverse 2, they're not the best. Do or die because I'm guessing it's just got die in the title, I don't know. Final Explosion as my second ultimate should speak for itself and hyper movement because he said I can pick any evasive I want and I just think hyper movement is a very good evasive in general. Just one final note before we get into the fights, if you use Kaioken times 20 and then use either Final Explosion or Neo Troy Beam, you can make them last for a very long time. So as we go into the first fight, my opponent picks Super Saiyan 4 Goku and something I've noticed lately is that there's been a quite a few players lately picking Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Something I notice immediately is that this guy vanishes after every few hits and in a moment he's actually going to drain all of his stamina and that's going to put me at a huge advantage and we're not even 20 seconds in to the fight. So here I charge up the Tri Beam and if you're on the ground you actually only use one hand which I'm guessing is a reference to when Tien used it against Nappa and killed himself. But either way it looks very badass. So here I sent him flying down and hit him with a quick charge energy volume and now I know he's going to vanish because if you have low stamina and you get just enough stamina recharged when you're in a combo so you can vanish, they're more than likely going to use it. If you just noticed, he stood still after he vanished, which I'm assuming it's because he went to use Dragon Fist, but didn't know which button it was, I don't know. But he goes for Dragon Fist again there and actually activates it and I'm just blocking it. And now I went for the Kyle King times 20 because I'm thinking... I think I know how this guy plays and I think I can maintain it throughout the fight. So there I broke his guard, then I went for the final explosion and it actually activates but if you look his stamina hasn't recharged but he blocked it so that must be just a simple visual glitch. And now I charge up Tri Beam trying to get something off like what Tien used on second form cell and it kind of fails and now he's going to use Dragon Fist on me and I can't use my evasive to get out of it. So I just have to endure the fisting. I never enjoy being dragon fisted, but it is what it is. Now, of course, my Kyle Ken has run out, so I don't think at this point of the match 
it would be very wise for me to use it again. I went for the dual die as soon as I vanished there. Even if he didn't hit me, which he didn't, I still get a temporary buff where I take less damage. So that's going to help me, especially at this point of the match. I went for the homing dash when he used Super Kamehameha to break his guard. Then I hit him down. Then I finish him off with the ultimate Neo Tribeam. And you have to admit, I do finish this first fight off in style. So that was a very fun first fight. I do like it when people pick Super Saiyan 4 and hopefully either as an update or in a future game Super Saiyan 4 will be available for Saiyan avatars. Going into the next fight the guy has Super Key Explosion and Crusher Volcano as his two ultimate attacks so he has a fairly decent amount of coverage I'd say. So as I send him flying down I get him in a small energy volley. Well not really he cancels it out by hitting me and he must have misclicked here because as soon as he vanished he went full of homing dash so there in a matter of less than a second he waits for three bars of stamina and just look at the difference in our stamina bars. I have full stamina and he has almost two bars now. Not even that. So, you know, like, I'm in a very good position right now. So I go for the Kyle Ken times three. And I'm only realizing this right now, but I think, but I'm not sure, that Kyle Ken times three reduces stamina used by half. So instead of taking one bar of key to vanish, he only takes half a bar. Same goes for the homing dash. But as you just saw right there, he went to transform and I broke his guard. And there I went for the final explosion because that would have been really nice to hit him with but of course he cancels me out. If I want to maintain my Kaioken times 3 in this fight I just need to send him flying away to create some distance so I can use right action a few times. But thankfully I do manage to hit him away and for some reason when I do hit him away I only go for one right action rather than two or three. I don't know why I used RTA there just once when I clearly had enough time to use it two or even three times. I mean but who knows. So he went for the Crusher Roll Cannon there. I used the Harmony Dash to break his guard again and now I really do need to use Rise of Action a few times because well I have very low stamina and I'm able to use it three times so now I have decent stamina to keep the Karakane time three maintained and I know when it's going to vanish because he's vanished after every two or three hits so I mean just look he's got no stamina here and he went for a stamina reset there. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. It feels like it was unintentional but I'm still going to take advantage of it. So I sent him flying down here. The ideal attack to use in this situation would have been final explosion but I just didn't have enough key to activate it. And that probably would have done enough damage if I did use it to finish him off. So now I'm just letting him hit me because if I do vanish there I'm probably going to do more bad than good because I'd have even lower stamina. In the moment I get him in a very cheeky throw which just feels like I grabbed his foot then just threw him which I just thought that was very funny but I really did need to go for the throw there so I could use RTA twice to get a lot of stamina back. He's going to do this thing again in a moment where he's going to vanish then immediately go for the homing dash which will just waste three bars of stamina in total so I don't know if that was intentional I don't think it was but I break his guard then send him down to the ground and I try to hit him there with the one handed try beam but he just manages to get out of the way of it just in time. So as I go in for the final combo to beat him I can really start to feel the salt building up in him because in a moment he's going to disconnect. He rage quit in the player match. Why do people do this? There's no point. It's a player match. You get nothing from disconnecting. Oh man, I mean, just wow. Anyway, moving on to the third fight, my opponent this time has Perfect Kamehameha and Spirit Ball as his two ultimates. So he has okay coverage, but I personally would replace Perfect Kamehameha with Super Kamehameha. To sell that way, it's it's just more reliable in my opinion. The only benefit Perfect Kamehameha has is that you can't block it, but that comes at the cost of it taking 4 bars of key instead of 3 and having a longer startup time. You'll see in a moment why having an ultimate attack that has a fairly long startup time is a bad thing to do because, well, right here he goes for it, I go for the homing dash and break his guard. And now I have more than enough time to use Final Explosion. He could have hit me there to cancel the tail, but I don't think he knew about it. And the damage it's going to do to this guy is going to be insane. You can see right here he has basically no health now. But at least now he has max key and max stamina. So I guess that's something that's going for him. So now as my stamina is recharging I go for a tri beam. Expecting him to rush into me but he doesn't. So fair play to him there. And I go for another one and he does dash into me. But I'm just not fast enough to activate it. And then he goes for the Gallic gun and I'm just dashing out of the way. I simply dash into him expecting him to vanish. And I do prepare the back hit as you just saw right there. And it does hit him as he dashes behind me. So that's just extremely unfortunate for that guy. But 
I mean, it was all over when I used Final Explosion, to be honest. So thank you guys for watching so far. There's a few fights left. The final fight, I would consider a blooper to an extent, because I was expecting the guy to use Body Change, and he didn't, sadly, so there's that. So thank you guys for watching so far, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the video.
Mm-hmm.